Hello everybody, Cody Adams, what's up? Yes, this is really happening. Uh, oh no, where'd my HBO Max go? Yes, this is really happening. Old wise man with family, so you can't watch with everyone, but you like the video because you like support. I appreciate that, old wise man. And yeah, this is going to be a travesty. I, um... <laughs> you know, guys, we watched the the first movie few weeks a couple weeks ago and now we're gonna watch the second one and i'll watch the third one because you guys paid for it you guys paid for it in january we raised some funds for st jude's uh we're done doing that now everything comes to me <laughs> Every, everything on the channel now is you know this is the this is the deal you guys are going to force me to watch garbage like this um well then i've got to make you pay the price so here we go um we're going to get going with this in one second let me make sure everything is good here. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, I had to edit this video. I didn't edit it when I uploaded it. That's fine. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay. All right, we're good now. So I'm going to get this episode started. I'm not wasting time. For those of you who were on the stream last time when we did the unexpected journey, um, I found a full hour and 20 minutes of just garbage content that didn't wasn't in the book, didn't need to be in the movie, was unnecessary to tell the story. And so I'm going to be keeping track this time as well. Uh, let's get this movie started. Gotta skip the ad first. I guess now with HBO Max, I'm getting ads. Now it's 37 seconds in? What is... That's not right. Okay, hang on a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna restart this timer because something's weird here. Like the ad throws off the whole timing of everything. All right, I guess that's just the ad. Okay, so this is the movie. We're in. Sorry about that. There was a thirty-second ad that kind of blew up the. Uh, let, me, let me fix this again here. All right, you guys get it. Come on, I, I'm. <sighs> okay, so I'm getting this ad now. I pay every month for HBO Max, and now I have to get ads on movies. What? I'm tired of these greedy jerks. Golly, hey, Pop War, what's up? Okay, let's start again. I'm going to start from scratch right here. The first Hobbit had an hour and 20 minutes of extra material. Complete garbage. If these have more, oh my gosh, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with the corruption of one of the greatest books I've ever written. Okay, now we're in. The Warner Brothers Pictures thing is on the screen coming at me. It's unpeeling. So yeah, the first one, all the stuff with... Uh, where is he here? Stupid Azog. Everything with Azog is completely added and completely ridiculous and completely stupid. <sighs> hey, Bill, what's up? Yeah, I hear you, Bill. Where can you watch this? It's on HBO Max right now. Of course, you can always buy or rent just about anything on Amazon.com. But that's where I'm watching on HBO Max. This is two hours and 41 minutes. There's no reason for three. Peter Jackson, you talk about me being a sellout. This is crazy. A Wingnut Films production. I like the music. The music is amazing. I, I remember parts of this movie, and I know I'm going to not like them. Where is this village now? Bree on the borders of the Shire. What is happening here? This isn't a thing. That's Peter Jackson. He's in his own movie. Bree on the borders of the Shire. There's a dwarf walking through Bree. This isn't a thing. <sighs> mm. 
Well, so far, we're at 0% of anything that was in the books. Great. So for some reason, what is this? For some reason, Thorin is in Bree and men are attacking him. What are we doing? Talking to Gandalf. I can't believe how dumb this is. This is so crazy. Gandalf is having a conversation with Thorin in an inn in Bree, just outside the Shire. So we're we're actually like prequeling this in the second movie. This is. <clears throat> Newt's too unhappy. So Gandalf is urging the dwarves to take back their homeland from Smaug. We don't need all we don't need all this. This is this is such garbage. I think it might be two hours of extra material, Pop War. You might be right. Hour twenty in the first one and <sighs> What a great way to spend an afternoon for me. Wait a minute. There's a price on Thorin's head from someone? This is so foolish. Uh, guys, this is going to be really difficult for me to spend two hours watching with you. I, I don't... We don't need all this extra exposition. All right, that was six minutes of extra material. <laughs> this seems more real. No, it doesn't. There's Your stupid Azog. I'm not sure how to balance this because the wargs are real. Is that the bear? It is. Okay. So I'm going to say six minutes. That's gorgeous. What?
Was that? It's a bear. It's Bayorn. Jorge! What's up? I hope you're having a good weekend, buddy. This is a disaster already. We're seven minutes into this movie. Why is Gandalf so, like, upset about Bayorn? <laughs> it's a stupid question. Gandalf says there's a house near here they can take refuge in, and then Thorin says, Whose house? Are they friend or foe? Oh, well, it's a foe. I just want to go fight some more guys. It's it's Bayorn, who's... This is actually in the book. Wow, they're running across an open field, dude. There's stupid Azog again. This Azog garbage is so bad, man. Boffer is too stupid to run. He just. Is that his name, Boffer? I don't know. The big fat one. Let's look it up. They're trying to plow over somebody's door. Here comes the bear. Really bad CGI, actually. Bomber. That's a large bear. I'm okay with this, the Bayorn stuff. It's in the book. I don't recall him being not fond of dwarves in the book. Is this what we do? We just make everybody not fond of dwarves to create artificial... Anyway... So those are real yaks, but they've had to, like, anyway. I'm trying to remember how the Bayorn thing went down in the book. I feel like they met him as a human. Their stupid Azog looking at Bayorn. Oh, my gosh. Every time Azog comes on the screen, I want to just, I just want to run. I just want to barf. Oh no. He's more? I mean, it looks like a big cartoon. I mean... If you remember Lord of the Rings, all of the orcs were were uh, practical. Like, they put real latex costumes on them. It was much... Anyway, I'm going to add two more minutes. You know, Lord of the Rings, the, or, the, the uh, orcs and goblins were... You know, they were practical masks and stuff. And here, <laughs> I can't do it, Ford. This is so awful. It's the worst. It's just the worst. It tortures me. <sighs> I'm only watching this because I agreed to it because you guys funded it. <laughs> it's bad. 
I think when we fund things in the future, it's just got to be a one and done because uh, nobody's here watching with me. <laughs> okay, Bilbo's going to put the ring on here at night while they're sleeping. Now what are we doing? So Bilbo's looking at the ring, and now we go to this abandoned castle with the, um... What? Now we have orcs or goblins going into the castle with where, I guess, the necromancer is. The necromancer was mentioned in, like, one paragraph in the book. Becomes an entire sidebar. Oh, it's Azog again! Why can we not let this go? This is ludicrous. They can't even have, like, decent dialogue for the CGI orcs. Now we have Bulg. This is so... I can't take this. This is... All right, that was two more minutes of wasted, useless material. There you go. There's Bayorn turning, turning back into a man. I'm good with that. Coming in the house and Bilbo's pretending he's asleep. Pretty horses. <laughs> Holy, those are giant bees. Oh, no, it's a small hobbit, I guess. They're probably just regular bumblebees. They even had to CGI Bayorn? It's Swedish actor Mikhail Persbrandt. I think it's funny for that every time there's a Swedish actor in a in a movie, you know you gotta memorize, man. That's funny. Swedish pride, baby.
These lands are crawling with orcs. Their numbers are growing. No, they're not. The lands are not crawling with orcs. I don't recall Bayorn being so, like, angry about stuff in the book. He just loves all the animals and... I could be wrong. I don't, I, I'm trying to remember if Bayorn hated dwarves in the books. I don't think he did. But here he just hates orcs more than dwarves, so he's going to help the dwarves. Wow, we cut that short. There's a whole, like, chapter in the book where they hang out with Bayorn and they spend time and they cut things short. Okay, we're going to Markwood. This is, this is there. This is good. So much CGI, though, man. He didn't warn them about the river, did he? That's the whole setup is... Hmm. Yeah, there they say Bayern in the distance. There you go. Yeah, Mirkwood looks pretty unpleasant, but it's supposed to. Oh, is he? I'm going to look that guy up. What else has he been in? Now the ring is calling to Bilbo. That stuff I'm all okay with. Michael Persburn. So he's in a bunch of Swedish movies, it looks like. Something with Will Ferrell. Hmm. Cool, dude. Why are we talking about the necromancer in Merc... I don't understand. Beautiful horses. <laughs> hey, David Boucher, what's up? <clears throat> We're about to enter Mirkwood. Gandalf is leaving, which he did in the book. We get a little more explanation into it here. I just don't like the explanation. All right, so Gandalf's leaving, and they're going to go into Mirkwood. I'm sure the orcs are going to follow them.
Okay, so, so far we're 21 minutes in and about half of it has just been extra garbage. So I'm okay. I mean, only half. <laughs> but they're going through Mirkwood and that's to be expected. And it's they're clearly portraying it the way it should. I like the way the Mirkwood is being portrayed here. Yeah, winding trails, dark. We're going to get some stupid necromancer stuff in here. I know it's going to happen. Because they put the spider with the necromancer earlier, and it's just going to happen. You're going to make some duct tape swords in a while. I don't know if you know what they are, but they're PVC pile. Oh, nice. Very nice, David Boucher. My boys used to make all sorts of stuff out of cardboard and duct tape, like swords and armor and all sorts of fun stuff. Wallets. You got kids at home, David? Is that what you're doing? Making them for the kids? It is definitely a murky wood. Spiderweb, Bilbo. Oops. Yeah, don't stop flicking it, dude. This is actually well done. This part, going through Mirkwood and everything is just just wrong. I'm okay with this. I'm actually I'm good with this actually so far. Yeah, seeing doubles themselves like they're just everything is just not right in Mirkwood. For little siblings, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, David. Spiders, dude. Yeah, you're being watched. Bilbo climbing in a tree. This is all, yeah. This is good. Very satisfied with, with the Mirkwood portion so far. <laughs> Bilbo gets out to the top of the tree. Oh, bathed in sunlight. Thank God. I feel better now. Yeah. All he can see as far as he looks. Yeah, the butterflies, yeah. I'm assuming that's the setting, son, so that would be west. Uh oh, something's coming. If it's not spiders, I'm going to be upset. <clears throat> and there we get to more of the cartoony stuff where he can fall like down six branches in a tree and somehow... Hold himself with one hand. Just, just, I hate the cartoon garbage they resort to in this movie. These movies. That spider wrapped him up, baby. I'm, I'm guessing these are like Shalob's relatives. I don't 
remember. I think Bilbo did get wrapped up in the book, and he had to like maneuver his hands around to get the ring on. But how's he gonna get out of that? Ooh, sting! They didn't really show us how he got sting out, but that's awesome. <laughs> So he had his wits about him more than anybody else because he was up in the sun. Totally good with Merkwood. This is great. He goes invisible. Puts the ring on and he can hear the spiders talking, yep. It's not Shalob, no. But you gotta think they're related, right? They're giant spiders after all. Did he just throw Sting? No, he threw something else, okay. Just threw a log or something. Bilbo's awesome, dude. Whatever else happens, Bilbo is awesome. Why did he do that? Why did he show him where he is? Yeah, there you go. It's called Sting. It's a great name. Why Why would he take his ring off and say I'm here? I don't know. Anyway. He's taking a pretty good chance. He's cutting the dwarves down and they're just falling all down through the trees. He's taking the chance that the webs will soften their blow, their fall. <laughs> Dude, Bilbo is taking out spiders, boy. No, I, that didn't happen. All right, we just created a, dropping the ring is kind of, is dumb. Dropping the ring is dumb. Ew! They just de <laughs> they just uh, made the spider an octo octoplegic. There it is. Go get it. Don't sit there and stare at it. Go get it. If something else picks up the ring and does something with it, this is going to be really dumb. What's that? Like some kind of albino... Crab spider thing? What? I'm still not ready to call this extra content yet, even though that weird albino crab spider thing is there. Or spider larva? I don't know what it is. Oh, that's a good little moment. Holds up the ring and goes, mine. I can't, I like that.
Why is Bilbo throwing up now? Why is he gagging? Yeah, there's... No! Oh, no. It just happened. Oh, no. At 32 minutes, it happened. Stupid elves and Legolas are here. Oh, no. That is so stupid. This is the dumbest thing that's ever been... This is the worst. This is the worst. I don't, I don't know. Maybe something will come that's worse after Legolas, but it's just so stupid that he's in this movie. Oh, no. Extra elf. Stabbing spiders. Why are, why are they protecting the dwarves? This is... This is not how it... <clears throat> so the elves did show up, but then they kind of just went away, and then they came back. It was kind of weird in the book. I get the idea to make it a little more direct, but this Legolas thing where he's de-aged is really, really stupefyingly stupid. He should not... <sighs> Orlando Bloom should not be in this movie. Hey, Gavin, what's up? I'm watching this train wreck. Duck growing boulder. In the video game Shadow of Mordor, they made Shiloba a sexy spider woman? What? That sounds worse than this, but... Yes, it's an ancient Elvis blade. This is so stupid. Gavin, the stream is exciting. I get to watch garbage on screen. From The Hobbit. So far, uh, we're up to 12 extra minutes of content out of 34. That's doing better than last time. Last movie was an hour and 20 minutes of extra. Capturing the dwarves is okay. And they take them to their Mirkwood, yep. So I'm going to call that... It's going to be hard to measure how much extra content this is with Legolas in the movie. Maybe I can just separate that and say... The whole Legolas thing is just dumb and complete, like, movie fan service, but not, like, actual Tolkien fan service. You're just crushing Tolkien fans. Crushing anyone that loves literature. <laughs> it's so stupid. All right, well, they're walking through the elf thing now. I'm going to call this three extra minutes. There are 13 extra minutes of... Stupid stuff. And I'm never going to get over Legolas. Here's the Mirkwood Elf King. They're making a lot of drama out of them walking through Mirkwood. Yes, here I am. I am the Elf King of Mirkwood. We will imprison the dwarves. Well, Legolas is kind of a jerk. No, you're cute. I'm not going to search you. Ah, it's, Evangeline Lily is very attractive. <laughs> <clears throat> Why does the dwarf stare at you, Toriel? Who can say? He's quite tall for a dwarf. Oh, yes. I... Try something new. <laughs> All this. I were adding extra garbage. No, I don't. The barrel scene is... The barrel scene was the moment when I was completely done the first time I watched this. Why are the dwarves banging on the bars? Like, you think you're going to break through the bars? Yeah, you're stupid. The barrel scene is, is the very moment... That is the scene that when I was watching this movie the first time, I just, I was done. I just said, that's it. I'm done. I can't watch any more of this trash. And I checked out. So now I get to watch it again. <clears throat> yeah, this is right. The, 
No. The Ark, why are we talking about the Ark and Stone? The whole point of this, if I remember from the book, is that the elves pressed him, why are you here? And they wouldn't say why they're there. Thornton wouldn't tell them why they're there, so they never knew. We're just creating extra drama. We're creating extra drama so we can make a third movie. I will let you go if you return what is mine, which is the Arkenstone. I'm actually okay with him yelling at him about abandoning the dwarves when they needed help. What? What's up with his face? What? Why are we making... What? I... This guy is no Elrond. Elrond's a quality elf. Mirkwood King is a piece of garbo. Is he speaking Klingon there? You could go Ishvakte and Dachmadol. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? Okay, now we're getting more drama. With the elves talking about the spiders and Bilbo hiding and listening. Elrond is amazing in Lord of the Rings. I, Elrond is amazing. I love Elrond. Hello, Mr. Anderson. But this guy's no Elrond. He's just a turd. He's a giant elf turd. Legolas said you fought well today. Oh, um, oh thank you. <laughs> He's grown quite fond of me. Oh. Like, I had no idea. Now we're creating some kind of stupid romance? Like, extra... This is Legolas's dad? Is that true? Is that actually true in the, like, the Silmarillion? So Legolas likes her, but she's with the king or something? Like, they're not acting like they're, I don't know. Oh, no, here we go. Here's our boy. Here's your boy, stupid Azog. Somehow got through, all the way through Mirkwood and is, ugh. <laughs> we just gotta throw Azog in every 20 minutes to make sure everybody remembers he's there this is all extra by the way this is all just I know I keep complaining I apologize hopefully you're, you can watch the movie along with me and realize how bad this actually is 
Is that his name, Hugo? Is he Swedish for? Now we got the dwarf flirting with Evangeline Lily. Careful, you'll end up on an island with her and it'll be a show that never ends and every episode they introduce something new that's kind of interesting and they never resolve it and then six years later they were all dead the whole time. <laughs> How many people love her? I mean, is she just like creating a little love interest with everybody the king legolas the dwarf like everybody's got to have like a thing for her Snooze fest. What are we doing? So the elf and the dwarf are exchanging rocks and flirting and talking about light and she's she's kind and nice. What is this? This is, this is. We're going on four minutes of extra stupid content that's completely unnecessary to the story. Fabricated stories. I mean, these two are acting like they're in some high school little two-person drama. It's just these two on screen for this much time, just talking. This is like the prequels. Hey, Joe Advice, what's up? Uh-oh, Legolas is jealous. All right, that was five minutes of extra garbage. Now we're up to 19 out of 45 minutes. It's uh, just been extra, just useless, useless stupidity. It is garbage, David Boucher. You know, the good, they mix these good scenes in, you know, Bilbo with seeing the barrels and getting an idea to put the dwarves in barrels. He's, the keys are there. He's going to let them all out. And then they throw it, then they mix in all that garbage with it. Again, I've said it a couple times. There he is. Bilbo's saving everybody as usual. All he does is save everybody. <laughs> You know, most... Don't scream, you morons. Why are you yelling? Yeah, shut up. Exactly. Um, most books have to be pared down and edited down to make a movie. The Hobbit, they, they doubled. <laughs> it's just so dumb. Tor exactly, Toriel doesn't exist in the book. Is she in the... Um, is Toriel the one that... Hang on. No. Yeah, it's just just a waste, just such a waste. Okay, they're going to go get in the barrels, and then everything goes completely haywire, and I'm done with the movie. Although, I'll keep watching, just for you guys. But that was, I, I clearly remember watching this. And they get in the barrels, and everything that happens in that scene, because in the books, they get in the barrels... And they float down, and a couple paragraphs later, they're they're at the bottom and they're freed. And Bilbo like took an extra like journey and crashed against some rocks or something. <laughs> yeah, get in the barrels.
That's actually funny. Okay, now they're on the barrels, and the whole story goes completely haywire. This has to be the worst scene in this entire stupid trilogy. Yeah, what do you do now, Bilbo? Ring time. <laughs> Bilbo's awesome. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm calling all this extra, so we're at forty seven thirty and <laughs> Bilbo can't get out now. <laughs> <coughs> there you go. Ow, sliding on his feet. Come on, let's go. They somehow held up and waited for Bilbo? Okay, here we go. Over the waterfall and into the orcs. This is so dang blastedly dumb. We're and we're going to get back to the cartoon stuff that I just can't stand about this movie. Here we go. As soon as Azog pops in, I'm I'm popping it up. You ready? Beautiful, beautiful scenery though. Stupid Legolas. If those elves wanted to kill them, they would just kill them. Yeah, what's that? Now they're all holed up at this gate. It's like a bad ride at Six Flags. Oh no, there we go. Orcs. This is when it gets... Oh my gosh. And by the way, I'm already, when I watched the first time, I'm already like, this is stupid. The orcs are here. This is stupid. And then it gets even worse. Bilbo kills everything, dude. Now Evangeline Lily Toriel is shooting orcs and stabbing them. Kill the she-elf. This is so... And there's Legolas. This is so relentlessly stupid. It's unbelievable. I mean, this isn't even The Hobbit. It's just, it's, it's just a Lord of the Rings movie. I, love, I do think it's funny how Legolas never, like, stabs anything... Even if he's standing like two feet away from you, he'll 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 uh, cue up an arrow and shoot you in the face from two feet away or point blank. Now we really get into it. Now we really get into it. <sighs> the Force Awakens is better than this. No, The Force Awakens is better than this. Uh, FYI to everybody, all Star Wars fans, Harrison Ford would not have come back to the franchise if they didn't kill him off. Just FYI, he would not have come back. Force Awakens is way better than this by like miles. I'd love to watch. I'll, I watch Force Awakens. I'll watch it anytime. I like Force Awakens. Now the barrels start taking out orcs. Apparently, Toriel can take on like 40 of them at once.
Wait a minute. Where did the dwarves get their weapons? Did they grab them on the way out? I didn't notice that. Because somehow... I mean, somehow Thorin has a sword? Has his elven sword pack? This is a gigantic action sequence that isn't... Now they're tossing a stick back to the... So somehow they knew that the guy in the back, the dwarf at the very end of this train chain, would need a stick at that very moment. And they sl they tossed a stick back to him. One, 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 one. So he had it at the perfect... Oh, this is... Dwarves can cut a log with two X? Where are they getting all these weapons? Oh, no. There it is. There it is. The barrel gets tossed up and just rolls over about 30 or... It keeps going! It's still going! His barrel rolled over like 30 orcs and, it... and now he pops... Now he's a spinning barrel orc. This is... This is... And then he jumps... Where'd that empty barrel come from then for him? Cartoon. It's a cartoon. <sighs> this is one of the worst scenes ever in a movie. And Legolas is standing on their heads. Then he's sliding on an orc. Then he's... Ki and this is all CGI, by the way. Every bit of it. How many, how many axes and, and swords can Thorin throw into the heart of an orc from a barrel floating on a river? Like, it was at least three. And now Legolas has pissed at him? Watch out. Oh my gosh. You guys. We're still going? The orcs are still chasing the hobbits? They're taking the hobbits to Isengard. That was eight and a half minutes. Now we get extra footage of Gandalf walking up a mountain. I can't deal with this. The trained guards just die really fast and they had armor. Wow, Gandalf, that's a pretty dangerous trek up a bunch of rocks on the side of a mountain. No, thank you. I'll pass. Oh, that's... In a big robe? What happens if his foot catches on the robe? He's going right down. There it is. <laughs> that one stone step was waiting for him to step on it. Where is he? Killing Hansel is not as bad. The introduction of Ray. Mary. I like Ray actually. I I don't have a problem with Ray and Kylo. I just have a problem with the storyline that wasn't developed. I like Ray and Kylo. Actually, I think Kylo is one of the best characters ever in Star Wars. Oh my! Now we're going on ten minutes of just extra garbage. Where's Gandalf going? Is he going to learn some more about Mordor? Mordor. Gandalf's a wreck, dude. Legolas had to be the greatest gay man of all time. Elton Johnny. Legolas? Is he gay? I thought he had a thing for Toriel here. He's an elf. He's not a man. Oh, no. We have more Radagast. Radagast, mentioned for like th one paragraph in the book. Keeps showing up in these movies. Where did he come from? Did Radagast just like teleport there? If he did that, why couldn't Gandalf just teleport there? I 
All right, Chris. Um, um, should they have killed Kylo off in the end? I don't know. I think that the whole the whole storyline went off the rails in movie in the third movie. Like they just abandoned any of the story that really was. I mean, it's just it's hard to measure what they should or shouldn't have done with Kylo. The whole story with Luke about why he why he converted. Radagast is your favorite character? He's not even in the... He's, uh, I, I'm not on board, Chris. Sorry, dude. He's not... He's, he's, he's meant... He's just barely mentioned in the books. Radagast the Brown or whatever he is. The enemy is preparing for war. Wow. We're going on 12 minutes of extra time here. Just extra... Stupid content. I I don't see anything that Gandalf learned by going to this cave. Like nothing happened. He went to the cave and Radagast showed up and then they just started saying that the enemy's at war. Like why don't we, we, we should actually, if, he's, if we're going to do this side quest of Gandalf to see what he's learning, they should show us what he actually learns instead of just saying... I'm going to call that 12 and a half extra minutes. The the dwarves rolling up to shore in the barrels is okay because that's part of the book. It's the birds in his hat and the super... Yeah, okay. But they're not in the book and I just... There's just no reason to have them in the movie. Oh, you're you're all over it, Chris. I I don't know. I just didn't need all that. What now? What now? There's a man. Is that? Uh oh, now there's a man who's after. It? Come on. What's his name? I can't remember his name. And of course, he shoots this. This is unnecessary. Shiv, hey, what's up, man? Thanks, buddy. <laughs> hopefully everything's going... Hopefully the baby's doing really well. I hope your baby's good. Oh, I need to move the timer over because it's um not showing right. Bard, thank you. Shiv is a gentleman and a scholar. Thanks, buddy. But this, so... That should be above. Hang on. This is extra barred stuff, too. I get the idea of establishing Bard as a guy who's really good with a bow and arrow and maybe establishing his character a little bit. <clears throat> no, no, I know who Bard is. You you got this down, Chris. You're like a you're like a Tolkien maestro it sounds like. Well, based on what you said earlier, do you think Bard is gay because he has long hair? I mean, is that, what, is that what the deal is? I mean, I don't think that's usually the sign of uh, of your uh, sexuality, just your hair. He's doing good. Dropped in on a stream to say hi before you go back to dad duty. Yeah, well, thanks, Jeff. I really appreciate it. Always appreciate you showing up. And I don't have the intros for, uh, for these uh, watch parties, but yeah, good to see you. I'm glad the baby's doing well. Yes, it is his destiny to kill Smog. 
Chris Barker, you are correct. You've got uh, <laughs> uh, you've got uh, Bard down, man. This is still a bunch of extra garbage. Capturing the orc and torturing him for information. This is... This... This is really dumb. This orc torture scene, orc, this is stupid. Really stupid. Yeah, that's kind of what Chris was saying, like... <laughs> Chris is making random assessments about people's sexuality based on how they act. This is very strange. <laughs> Lego Hobbit is calling you? Go for it, dude. You don't need all this extra garbage exposition. Now the elves are all wound up about Azog. Oh, the orc's twitching on the ground. So I guess that this is so stupid. So I guess they're setting up the orcs as one of the five armies because that's dumb. It was goblins... It was elves, men, dwarves, goblins, and eagles, right? Those were the five armies. Now they're going to throw orcs in there somewhere? It really looks like Orlando Bloom kind of filled out between movies, like he was working out. More orcs! Yeah, whoever said this is going to be even more extra. We're getting there. Ew. At least that's a practical orc, not CGI like this guy. There is another scent. Man. Man flesh. There it is. <laughs> he didn't. He said it after me. Vicarious viewing is good. Way too, way too much fluff in the Azon... <laughs> Azog was not in The Hobbit. You know this. You know this, Chris. Okay, that's another six extra minutes. We're at 37 and a half minutes, so we're more than half of this movie has just been extra garbage content that Peter Jackson just made up to make sure they could make three movies. <laughs> What's this bard is maneuvering the boat through...
I don't recall any of this in the book either, where they're on this boat and they have to pay Bard for traveling and now they're coming up to Lake Town, right? We're going to Lake Town, aren't we? Is that what's next? And they see the mountain in the distance. This isn't, I, that doesn't bother me as much. Just be... And fake bad jokes that don't really fit. I don't remember Lake Town being so in, I mean, they were like suspicious of the dwarves, but not like, you know, just ready to arrest them and throw them in jail like everybody is here. Everybody hates dwarves. All the, again, just so much extra drama. Oh, they're filling the barrels with fish. That's nice. I hate when that happens. Ew. Oh, they're going to suffocate down there. What? This is all extra garbage. Does Thorne talk about the Battle of Moria in the book? Um, no. No. I mean, it's the whole opening scene of this, of the first movie. And like, this is another, another two minutes here. We're going to say it's worth 40 minutes of extra garbage. Um, yeah, he, there is no, he's, there's no talk of the Battle of Moria in the book. That's just extra crap. Reading between Tolkien's words to achieve cinematic mood, PJ did okay with the movies, but they're like a Jamie Oliver. I don't know what that means. I don't know what Jamie Oliver omelet means. Hey, Gavin, welcome back from lunch. I don't, who's Jamie Oliver? Do I need to look up Jamie Oliver? This is these the dwarves hiding in fish buckets is really dumb. Oh, Jamie Oliver's a chef guy. Okay. Oh, is he the master? Yeah, they're creating a whole bunch of extra drama at Lake Town, too. I don't know what Stephen Fry is. I thought maybe maybe this and that's where Azog dies in the movie, but he did not. I... What? Oh. No. Azog's not in the book. Azog doesn't exist in The Hobbit. It's just ludicrous that he's in the movie at all, let alone in the movie every 20 minutes. Boy, Lake Town's a mess here, dude. Yep, Chris, this, I, I said on the first, in the first stream that, you know, The Hobbit is historically significant literature, and so is Lord of the Rings, so when you mess with it like this, it's just, I can't believe all these people agreed to be in it. Peter Fry, Stephen Fry, okay, yes, there you go, thank you, I like him. He's perfect for this because he's he's funny and he's comedic and all oh, this is extra. This is they went to Lake Town. They met him. They spent like a couple of days and then they left. 
and they encountered the master who was kind of a douche and I mean I get that we had to establish some stuff but are we going to spend like how much time are we going to spend here does Smog not die in this movie how much time do we have left in this movie we're not even halfway. Now we're creating a bunch of extra drama between Bard and the Master. Like Bard is the guy that stands for the people and the Master is evil. Which the Master is a piece of garbage, right? But So is this movie. What state do I live in? Missouri. I'm in Missouri. Balg is not in the books, is he? There's no orcs in the book. There's no orcs in The Hobbit. Period. Orcs don't appear. The timer's synced. Oh, it's a little bit. It's like a few seconds off. There was an ad at the beginning of this that kind of kind of made it wonky. So, unfortunately, I you know, I'm I'm maybe 5 5 plus seconds off. But there was an ad on HBO Max at the beginning of the movie that kind of threw the timer off. Is that Stephen Colbert? It is Stephen Colbert. I know he loves the he loves Tolkien, so. I mean, I'm okay with this Ugh, anyway. I keep talking about the things I'm okay with and I'm not. This is like a whole bunch of, again, more extra garbage. And I'm not even halfway through this movie. We have a whole third movie? What is this? Bard's kids and family? Too much. Oh, here's a pretty little girl. A Bard's pretty little girl. Good Lord. That dwarf is super clean for being in a, a latrine. Cool. Oh, they're all in the latrine? Or does it just empty? Or does the toilet just empty into the lake? That's awful. How much time are we going to spend here? There's the giant bow. You think your streaming service is a bit off? Maybe. I, it's hard It's it's hard to sync it up exactly. I mean, HBO Max says that I'm 1-16-11 in the movie, which is like, actually like 30 seconds off. That's what it is. But the 30 seconds was the ad. So I should be here. So if you're at 1-16-22 or 23 on HBO Max right now, then you're actually lined up with where I am in the movie because there was a 30-second ad at the beginning. Right now, um, Balin is talking to Bilbo about about the Black Arrow and, sh and shooting uh, Smaug and, and nobody could ever... Is this, is this how it worked? I thought he just used a regular bow. I didn't think there were extra, like, extra special arrows in the book with an extra special crossbow thing on top of an extra special building. I thought he just pulled out, like, a steel arrow and hit him in the hole in his armor. They just changed the whole thing! He has no armor under his left wing because one of the humans hit it and loosened it? That's not a thing. Peter, you accomplished so much with Lord of the Rings and it's such an amazing... It's just such amazing stuff. And you just... Now you just threw it all away with this. This just tarnishes... What Peter Jackson has done for, for Tolkien. Oh, 
I know I sound like a huge whiner here, but, you know, you guys definitely paid for me to watch these movies, but this is the result, that you get to hear what kind of garbage they are. It's a giant fish hook. It's a treble hook. What are we doing? Now we have some kind of side story where weapons are banned in Lake Town. And the dwarves have to invade the for the forgery to get the Is that Gorpy? Oh, it's Geo. Hey Geo. We got a Nooch Jr. friend here. Geo's in the house. <laughs> Favorite thing of both movie trilogies, seeing occasionally correct areas. Well, the original trilogy is. The original trilogy is astonishingly amazing. And like I said, the, the original trilogy just ha had to like actually reduce the size of the stories to tell them on film while adding a few small things in, but they stayed true to the story. You know, the little things they added in to me. I was okay with pretty much... I was okay with everything. Actually, I don't remember anything really setting me off in the original trilogy. This just adds so much extra... Like here, we're back to Toriel again. We have this whole... We're going to be... There's only 30 minutes of this movie that are actual content from the book so far. This is so stupid. And you got a de-aged Legolas. So his face is like super perfect. Is this all green screen or are they filming this in New Zealand? Because it's gorgeous. Yeah, they're actually on those rocks. But those rocks could be built, I guess. I don't know. Your brother's wife got corona. That's no good. Although, you know, generally, hopefully, if you're vaccinated and boosted, you've got a real good chance of not getting super sick from it, hopefully. Just getting getting some sick. So hopefully she's okay. Hey, Cyrano, I'm... <laughs> am I halfway there yet? 120... Oh, I'm halfway there. Yay! <laughs> if you don't count the 10-minute credits at the end. A tapestry? Is this, is this Last Crusade? Indiana Jones Last Crusade? No, tapestries! This is a castle, and we have many tapestries. Oh, my Lord. Yep, there it is, Thorin. It is unnecessary. Prophecy. Oh, my gosh. A lot of people, we had two, uh, we had two new juniors in the house that got covid um, I don't remember what it was exactly. Was it in January they got it? Omicron was kind of going crazy around here at the time. Honestly, guys, I, you know, my wife and I, are, we're being careful with stuff. And, you know, we're not out partying all the time. But we've been going out to eat once a week. We haven't stopped. And we're just kind of living our lives and just being a little more careful about stuff. But it's time. It's time to move forward. We all need to move forward. Get yourself vaccinated. Get yourself boosted. And go out and... Live your life without being a complete moron. That's my uh, take on the whole thing. Triple vaccine, yeah. Yeah, you can still get it, so hopefully that'll keep her from getting really sick. And then somehow the dwarves can magically climb up each other and with... This is so dumb. Obviously a rope is pulling them up. 
and the dwarves invade the armory. And here, oh, hey, guy with the wounded leg, you carry all the weapons. So we can keep emphasizing that you have a wounded leg. And he, he just fell downstairs holding a bunch of swords and axes. All this is... This is... Um... I remember right in the books, they actually gave them weapons and sent them on their way. With guides. They had guides to take them to the other side of the lake. They're turning this into like a... Uh, here we are. How many times have the dwarves been captured so far? <laughs> we just added another one. They were turning this into kind of like a... Uh, Rohan thing where uh, King, uh, oh no, what's his name? This is the King of Rohan, Theoden, where Theoden and Worm, this is exactly, it's Theoden and Wormwood. They've done, they've just like duplicated it here. You press Y, they can stack. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Insanity. You can even feel it when you're watching it. I, if you haven't read the book, which I don't understand what anybody would watch without reading the book, but if you haven't, and by the way, why did they add extra finger stuff for him? Um, like Thorin's hands are larger. But why, you know, you can feel like with these extra parts that they're just, it's just fluff. It's just extra fluff. It doesn't add anything to what's actually... It's not advancing the story. Like adding just a truckload of exposition and now Bard is mad. Notice how Killy didn't even get a scratch at... Right! Look, he fell down with all the swords and axes and we were, oh, we were worried about the noise he made, but God forbid he gets stabbed again. Do you have the power cables for the light computers? Do I have the what? The power cables. Power cables from what? I got a bunch of power cables. Yeah, I got those. You want? You're gonna be on a stream here in a second. Gonna... I gotta get power cables here, everybody. Hang on. They're converters, actually. Converters. converters. I was being, making a Star Wars joke. Here, here's a whole bag of cables. Ah, here's all my oh, cables, geez. everybody. I, I just keep all. Oh, we'll, we'll grab the bag. Don't grab the. Hey. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, take what you want. It's, I, I keep them for situations <coughs> like this. Look, guys, here's some old red, yellow, and white uh, audio and <laughs> video cables. <laughs> oh, did I miss anything in the movie? That's... No. Let's see here. We had dinner last Saturday, but he, she got it this Thursday, so you think you're good. A quest. This drama. I don't think I don't remember the Bard and Thorin drama really taking off until after they got the treasure. And that's when it was like Thorin just became greedy and didn't want to share or work with the humans at all. And that's when the so we're creating some extra a lot of extra drama here between Bard and Thorin and the master. Now the dwarves are welcome and oh, and Bard knows. Oh, and Thorin stands defiantly on the steps. I guess I can't call the entire Lake Town sequence extra because they did go to Lake Town, but it's just it's just so much extra stuff thrown in. Composite cable? I don't know. Is that is that what this is? Is this a composite cable? 
I don't really know what it's called. I just know that it's got the red, yellow, and let's see, the red and white. I think the red is for video, and the white and yellow are for audio, if I remember. Then I got the green and the blue and the red here, too. That's the extra, like, that was the super special, like, uh, old HD cabling back in the day. <laughs> Actually, the monitors I have here, I've only got one, like, current monitor. The other two are old ones that I have to actually... I have three monitors here. Like, here's where my camera is and my Streamlabs set up. In front of me here is where I got the movie and where my gameplay plays when I'm playing games. Over here is where I have YouTube pulled up when I, you know, so, so I'm watching the stream right here. And these two side monitors, this is a new monitor in the middle, but these two side monitors, I actually had to get HDMI adapters to turn cables like this or those old, like, you know, um, cables with the, you know what I'm talking about? Like the rectangles that are kind of, yeah, I had to get those and convert them into HDMI for these two side monitors. I got a big giant old TV down here too. Hang on, let's show you that. I, I can't take the movie. This is, again, I am again checking out of the movie. But, you know, we're gonna, again, we're going to keep watching it, but let me show you something. So, you know, we're getting ready to move, so we're packing stuff up. Here's a giant, well, not giant, but like a, I don't know, a 20, 23 or 24 inch TV. It's got all the cabling on the back is this old stuff. Here, you can you see it? There you go. There it is. That's all the cabling right there that I have to use. So, but there's no HDMI. I don't think. Let me see. Oh, there is HDMI in this. Cool. So maybe when I get in the new house and I get the new, uh, when I get the, we're not moving until like June. That's the goal. But what if I can move in the new house and get the new studio set up? Maybe I'll have that set up for something too. Too much stuff. <laughs> Just make an omelet stop with the cabbage and custard. Ooh, Lord. Okay. I, I'm good. That, so so far I'm saying 55. We're, we are 90 minutes into this movie and 55 minutes of it is extra. Just extra Peter Jackson fiction. <laughs> That's good Lord. So horrible. All right. Now we're going to the Misty Mountain. That's beautiful. Wow. Look at this place. Look at these. I got to go to New Zealand, dude. I know you won't. I think there aren't there. Dale, aren't there tours like Lord of the Rings tours and? You think you're helping my sanity? <laughs> Ford, you always help my sanity, buddy. Gandalf did say to meet him here. Thorin's turning into a moron now. He sees the mountain and he just can't control himself. Did you get what you needed? I don't know why Radagast is in this movie. Oh no. So now we gotta deal with the uh <sighs> We have Radagast and we're going back to the Necromancer. Why is why is the Necromancer a thing? Like the Necromancer is the one that's organizing this whole effort against the dwarves it's just it, in the book it is just a natural denouement a natural development a natural push forward with events to the denouement of the story where really is when they is when they is when they kill smog and then the the battle of the five armies is after that but that's like one chapter and really just kind of resolves pretty quickly but here we're building up, instead of building up to Smaug in the movie, we're building up to this giant battle. Like the goal of the, they've just changed, they've changed the, I, denouement is the right word. They've changed the denouement of Hobbit from the killing of Smaug into the Battle of the Five Armies. And what a horrific mistake this is. And now Gandalf is wandering through the Necromancer's Fortress for some reason. Oh, 
Oh, the Shire's real place in New Zealand? I gotta go. I gotta get there. Uh, the Cartoon Hobbit, you mean back from the 70s or 80s? I remember that. I remember the song at the end of that. Um, the road goes ever, ever on. Ba -bum -bum -da -dun to the sea. I don't remember that, but I remember the tune of that song at the end of The Hobbit. Because that's what he sings at the end of the... By the way, in the book, there's all sorts of singing and stuff. And that has ceased. It would, they had singing in the first movie. There's no singing in this movie. We just, oh no, there he is. There's your boy. There's your boy. Azog. <sighs> that was two and a half minutes. Wandering through the mountains makes sense because they got to find the door and then. Um, what's the bird called that kind of guides them to it? You couldn't see that thorn? It's like right there, dude. I don't think this is how it went. But I'm all, I'm all right with that. What's the bird? It's a... Uh, what is the bird? And the answer for it is I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to watch the third movie in a couple weeks, and I'm moving on. We're moving on to the next thing because I, I just can't. <laughs> the next fundraiser for Nooch to do something he doesn't like. What's the bird called in the... Thrush, the thrush. Here's the hidden door. That's not going to work. Bill was got to figure out the riddle just like Frodo did. Yes, Thrush, thanks. Thanks, Gavin. I looked it up. Sorry, I Googled it. Beloch. <laughs> Wrong movie. I need to watch the uh, Lord of the Rings again. Sunsets. What is it with? I can't remember this. It is something with the sun setting that impacts them being able to see or not see the door. Song Thrush. Oh, the Leonard Nimoy Hobbit song. <laughs> <coughs> Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins, bravest little hobbit of them all. I know the three Leonard Nimoy song. But that tells you what a big deal these books were. You know, back in the 60s, Leonard Nimoy was singing that on a beach with go-go girls. Bilbo, Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins and their go-go. <clears throat> the uh, cartoon's a tough watch. I imagine it is. Most stuff doesn't age well. Oh, they lost the light of Durin's day. Okay. Well, you gotta wait for a year. Just one year. That's all. Balin is a big quitter. Every time something bad happens, he's like, yeah, we're done. We're stuck in this elvish prison forever. We got no light. We can't find it. Everything's over. We might as well just quit. Balin, you forget that you have your hobbit friend there. No, you can't give up. Jedi always get back up. Lord of the Rings has not aged well? Are you kidding me? No. Wrong. Wrong. Wow, Chris. I don't agree with that at all. I agree with that at zero. I'll watch Lord of the Rings today. Wow, I don't... Why would you say... Why do you say that? Why do you think that Lord of the Rings has not aged well? What's what's the matter with it? 
I mean, if the special effects aren't quite there, I'm always more forgiving of special effects in an older movie just because you do what you got to deal with. But no, Lord of the Rings, that does not have an aging problem. This looks like a set to me, not a mountain, which is a pretty impressive set, but... The moon is the last light of Durin's day, not the sun. Ha ha! There's the thrush. And there it shall be. It's coming. I gave a lot of credit to what's his name that plays Bilbo. He's amazing. He's really good. What's his name? I can't remember his name. There it is. <laughs> the dwarves are gone? What morons. Lord of the Rings, your favorite movies, David Boucher? Cool. I can't argue with that. They're up there for me. Bill, now why does Bilbo have to kick the key and then who stepped on it there? Is it Thorin? Oh, come on. Why are they, why did they, just cartoon drama. We keep adding cartoon drama to the movie. There's no reason for Bilbo to thrash around until he accidentally kicks the key and almost th kicks it down the mountain. But Thorin steps on the string. Too much. It's too much cartoon drama. There's no need for all this crap. Yes, Hobbit. You're amazing, Hobbit. Martin Freeman, thank you. Yep, I really like him. He's really good in this movie. Really good in this movie. It could be your old DVDs. I don't know. I'm Now you're making me want to watch it. I'll probably get my youngest. I don't know if he's seen all three of them, and I need to get him and sit him down and watch them all. We we recently have been watching Spider-Man after, after No Way Home. Now, this isn't really how it went if they all go down there because Bilbo went down on his own first, right? <laughs> Did you get what you needed? They're ignoring me. I'm on hands best, but I I've never watched the extended versions. I should watch those. I should watch the extended Lord of the Rings. I would I would enjoy it. <clears throat> what what more is there in Amon Hen that they add in the extras? I mean that was a pretty uh, intense scene. It kind of did all right. They took, they made off with Marion Pippin, and Aragorn had the awesome fight scene with the orc, which is amazing. Boromir dies, and all that stuff's in there. Burgle, it's time to burgle, Bilbo. Gulp. <laughs> oh, and Achilles still back in Lake Town. I thought they all went. This is extra. They made a Swedish theater of Lord of the Rings in 70. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, there was a, there was a, a, cartoon slash live action movie that was made I can't remember what it's 
but it, I think it's just a Return of the King back in the seventies, and it's it's or eighties. It's not great, like Bill, like Frodo and Sam are cartoons, but then the orcs and the goblins are all like, like silhouettes of people in costumes. It's kind of weird. Extra Legolas nailing extra orcs with arrows. Very, no, no thanks. It's unnecessary. Thorin loves Bilbo. It's great. So now we have this whole side storyline with is it Killy that with the leg wound and they got to go get stuff to heal it, which is stupid. Here we go. Bilbo and Smog. Oh, I'm sure there's great Lord of the Rings audiobooks. That would be long. The Hobbit was 10 hours. Oh, here we go. Gandalf back in the Necromancer fortress. Um, the Hobbit or the Hobbit was 10 hours with um What's his name rating it? That's where I got brain fog, dude. What's Gandalf doing? I have no idea. I don't even care. There he is again. It's Gandalf actually fighting Azog. So stupid. Andy Circus reading The Hobbit was 10 hours. I can't imagine how long Lord of the Rings would be. Those books are f five times, five or more times the length of The Hobbit. So you'd have like 150 hours of those? This is really stupid. Gandalf fighting Azog with all the orcs there in the Necromancer's Palace. None of this is a thing. It's not even like, it's not even like intimated that it's a possible thing. This is completely made up by Peter Jackson. This is ridiculously foolish. Gandalf fighting the necromancer with the orcs close on his heels. This whole battle is fiction. And now we get Sa the Eye of Sauron? No, that's the necromancer. Look like the Eye of Sauron. Or is that Sauron? It's Sauron. So Sauron is the necromancer, is that what they're saying? Oh, that's some really bad, like cheesy eighties like 
special effects like coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. Don't knock. Bilbo, he's knocking. Put the ring on, dude. Bormy is your favorite from Hobbit. He sounds like you. You're from Yorkshire. Ah, I know Sean Bean. Oh, I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm into Sean Bean. I don't know that compilation, but I mean, I'm into Sean Bean dying compilation. I'm a big Sean Bean fan. I like him a lot. Look at those hobbit feet. They're actually, oh, they, they're not super floppy right now. They're actually gripping the coin. Look at that. SPFX. <laughs> oh, you're going to wake that dragon up, dude. He's making as much noise as possible. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> is he supposed to be looking for the Arkenstone? I thought he just kind of came across it by happenstance, but the dragon's under the coins, dude. Uh... Oops. You love his posing. See, I haven't seen this. I checked out when they got to Lake Town the first time I watched it. He's moving around now, Bilbo. You better get that ring on, dude. Wow, oh, that's a really horrible CGI, like, big, wide, broad scope there. That's a little cheesy. Bilbo sizing him up like this. and That's kind of weak. <laughs> How does Smog breathe underneath all that coin? Yeah, you better get that ring on, dude. Benedict Cumberbatch crawling on the floor. <laughs> yeah, you got your swords done. Cool, David. Put it on.
This is cool. This is, I'll give credit here. This is cool. This is a little bit extra from the book, but like this is, you take a little bit of poetic license with him running across the pile and yeah, I'm, this is, this is cool. Uh, where am I? So Smog is now talking to Bilbo for the first time. Precious. Oops. Looks like a cat when he poses, kinda. And now he sees the Arkenstone. <laughs> I love all the Underhill references, and then they turn into the their uh, secret code name in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Barrel Rider, there you yeah. go. No dwarves here. Um, I guess it's okay the bit with the extra bit with the Arkenstone here, but it's a little bit much. Yep, here comes the dragon. Well, that's not his wife. That's not uh, Bard's wife. That's just his three kids. He loses his wife at some point. There is nowhere to go. Too much drama here with Bard and his children. I We didn't need all this. I don't, I really, I don't think Bard used an extra special arrow in the book.
So it is the black arrow. Okay. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> Put the ring on Bilbo. I guess they're they're like balancing out the fact that Sauron can see the ring, which in the Hobbit book it wasn't a thing. So Bard's getting ready. I'm. I bet dwarves do smell strong like stay downwind strong. Probably. Who moved to Minas Morgul for peace? Minas Morgul. Who moved? She moved to Minas Morgul for peace. Who? His wife? Is that what they... S See, you got a lot of background. Is that what they said in the movie? Because I don't think that's in the book at all, is it? Chris Barker, you know. You're the expert here. Let me know. Black Arrow Windland. Yeah, it is in the book. I just looked it up. But there's only one of them, and I, d I think he just shoots it with a regular bow, too, in the book. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. Yeah, Mrs. Bard, I figured it out. Sorry about that. Oh, now Bard's going to fight the whole... This is extra. This whole extra bard piece just to set up some drama so he can shoot Smaug. <laughs> There's a giant statue of the Master. I like that. The Master's little worm tongue is just, this is stupid. Another minute of extra garbage. She might be a navigator in a spice freighter. She could be. So maybe she's in the spice mines of Kessel, smashed into who knows what. So far, we're at 64 minute extra minutes in this movie, so more than half of it is extra Peter Jackson fiction. So that makes a total so far of 2 hours and 24 minutes of... Just completely extra stuff in the first two movies. Meaning you could have had one movie. And the third movie is like, the whole thing I assume is going to be extra. I don't know. If Smog knows about the Arkenstone, why is it just sitting out in the open? And we flash back to the stupid necromancer. Gandalf is in prison at the ne And we have massive orc armies advancing. Oh no, this is... Oh no. Oh no. Ugh. Oh no. Now the orcs are in Lake Town? What is happening? Why are there orcs in Lake Town? Oh, this is so stupid. Oh, come on. Cartoony extra stuff there. Bilbo flying through the air with the Arkenstone. I hate all the cartoony extra crap he threw in here. There's the open spot. There's the open spot. 
where the armor is missing. Stealth of the Orc Ninjas. Yeah, that's exactly what they were. They were Orc Ninjas climbing on roofs and... <sighs> Clearly the extra content I hate the most. But I really don't like the cartoony way that he portrays some of the real content, too. Like, Smog hits the gold and Bilbo flies up in the air of the Arkenstone. They both tumble down. It's like... You'd have been really damaged from that. So they had to move Bilbo to an open ground area with no coins, which I get. I don't know why he took so long to do it. Why does he keep taking the ring off? I guess he's just keeps seeing bad things while he's doing it. Okay, Smaug is pissed. Here he comes. Ezio Orzio? I don't know what that means. Is this Latin for ninja orc? <laughs> pig. There's the weed. Okay, so he's got to go get... This is... This whole... Oh, there's the orc ninjas again. There they are. Ugh. I really couldn't hate the, the, the whole... The whole Azog thing, I could not hate it any more than I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I have to tell you, I hadn't read this book in 30 years when this movie came out. And as soon as he popped on the screen, I knew it was garbage. Of course, their house is the first one the orcs attack, or are they going after them specifically? <clears throat> Somehow the orcs are smashing through the roof, like just they just stomp really hard and go through the roof. Is that how it works? This is beyond dumb. <sighs> beyond dumb. What? And now Toriel's in Lake Town? What in the world is happening in this movie? Legolas and Toriel show up in Lake Town. This is the absolute giant piece of garbage Oak and Shield is gone. How do we know that? Because he wasn't in this one house. <laughs> <coughs> this, oh my gosh, cartoony, cartoony. Somehow the orc gets sprung up into the air. Legolas stabs him with two swords in the cartoons. Ugh. What an absolute train wreck. We're losing him, but Torio loves him. He, She loves this dwarf. We're going to start a new race. Dwelves. There goes Legolas shooting things at point-blank range again. Boy. 
Toriel's just taking her time. She's just standing there. Just standing there. Oh, oh, is he? Is he? Is he? Is he not? Is he? Is he not? Is he? Is he? Oh, weeds. 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 Let's take our time. Slowly. Slowly save him. Take your time. That was four garbage minutes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The Holdo effect. Yeah, Holdo should have just been Akbar. There's no reason to add a character. Just put it, make it Akbar. Make Akbar the hero of the resistance. He was there. Dwelves. <laughs> there you go. See? Nope, I didn't find the Arkenstone. I can't tell you because you're a gr you clearly are a greedy, sick person. This is where Thorin starts to lose it and, and get all absorbed in his greed. This didn't happen. Thorin was not in the chamber with Smaug. All right, cue up another timestamp for me so I can track how much extra garbage. This didn't happen. The dwarves didn't go in until Smaug had left. And they didn't they didn't even know like the um the bird gosh darn it, what was the bird again? The uh, the thrush like shows up to tell them it's okay and something happens. Oh, it is really hard to absorb this movie as existing. I can't believe this exists. King's foil, better my own herb. Epic cat, you're killing me, dude. Welcome. I'm glad to see you, cat. But no, this is garbage. Give me rock, me be happy. <laughs> I'm telling you, there. You know, if you put Tariel and uh, Killy together, you get dwelves. She's going to bear dwelves for him. I love him. I have to cast elf spells over him. What? Oh, and then she shines bright in the light, and he's going to hit their. He's falling more and more in love with her as each moment passes. <laughs> that is so stupid. <clears throat> Do we have a scene where Smog is going to chase the dwarves through Erebor? Is that what's happening? Yep, that's what's happening. I can't even absorb this. You know, it's such a great and beautiful book and beautiful story. It's simply told. It's it, written for, for children to read. I remember reading it as a middle schooler. And he's just corrupted it into this giant piece of Hollywood trash. You think Killy is drunk at this point? He's drunk with love. Oh, you dropped a coin. Nope. Somehow. Smog. Nope. Smog, Smog is floating above them, dropping coins, and doesn't see them? Honestly, this part with the dwarves in there near Smaug, if the rest of the movie wasn't so 
messed up. He's, how is he resting on walnuts? It wouldn't have bothered me as much. Like to me, that's that's a small liberty with the with the story, but because everything else is so jacked up, I'm counting it as just extra garbage. We're at uh, right now. We're at seventy three extra minutes in this movie that should not exist. Yeah, dragon ninja. <laughs> Or dwarf ninjas. You came for me. You love me. I mean, he is a good looking for a dwarf. I mean, let's be honest. Wait for it. Oh, no. Why is Killy speaking poetry at Torio? Alright, I'm leaving the dwarves on the counter right now. We're adding time to this movie. And the dwarves come to a room full of their ancest their dead ancestors. Now there's a bunch of dead dwarves. My magic words will make Toriel... Basically, that's what he's saying. Oh, the will, will she love me, does... Shut up! Stupid Killy. So dumb. I can't... You know, I, I could have tried to get Cosmo to watch this with me. I guarantee he would, ref he would have refused. He's a giant Tolkien fan. And this is just such garbage. You're not going to kill the dragon. My magic pebble will hypnotize. What? What is this? We have a face-off between Thorin, Balin, and Bilbo, and... This isn't a thing. And why would he be distracted by those other three dwarves? So, Bilbo, Thorin, and Balin face off against Smaug, and then he gets distracted by three other dwarves behind him, and then he just lights the whole place on fire. Yeah, you're hosed, dude. This is all extra. This isn't this is not a thing. And they jump into these Oh no. Are we going to get a They slid down slides into mining cars that are hanging above like i guess they've been hanging above that for like a hundred years and not decomposing like they, they still function and here we're back to stupid azog in lake town legolas against the other orc chief guy Oh, this should be an epic showdown. Why do you pull your sword out now? Just, just arrow him. Wait, what are we doing? Wait a minute. Legolas, his entire career, whatever happens, he arrows everything. He'll arrow you from six inches away. He'll arrow you from 200 yards away. But this guy comes out and he pulls a sword out for some reason. Just shoot the guy. And if you fail to shoot him, then... 
This is so dumb. It's like Peter Jackson actually wanted this to be dumb. Let's make something really dumb. Hey guys, I've got an idea. We'll make this next scene really, really stupid. I can't believe this is happening right now. I can't believe this is happening right now. Was Orlando Bloom out of work at the time? Was Peter doing him a solid? Like, hey, I'll pay you a few million dollars to come out and be in my movie. <sighs> Legolas and Balg have another showdown in the next movie? Oh no, Legolas is bleeding. How is this possible? Oh, he could have just shot him with an arrow. He's still not trying to shoot him with an arrow. Now he's chasing him on a horse? Down a dock? Or a pier? This is the stupidest... Joseph, this is a... I know you guys paid for it, so... Thanks. Uh, the, the price is going up next time I gotta do something I hate. <laughs> the price goes up next time I gotta do something I don't like. This is awful. Now Smog is chasing Thorin down a mine shaft on a bucket. And somehow Smog doesn't think, I'll just cut the rope. Instead the What is happening? This is Then Smog flies past why doesn't Smog just kill him? Thorin is balancing on Smaug's snout. Thorin was balancing on Smaug's snout. I'm so close to swearing, you guys. I'm so close to it. You don't need your dad to swear in front of all the children. and This is... this. It's this beyond words at this point. This is beyond words. If you want to, if you are watching this and you love the Hobbit, you need to pull up. Um, I can't even think straight anymore. Pull up Andy Circus reading the Hobbit and just listen to it. It's ten hours. You can spend two weeks, just like an hour a day or something. You know, forty five minutes a day. You will love it. It is so beautiful. It's such a beautiful, gorgeous story. What is this? Are you telling me that his fire is so weak that they can just hide on the other side of stones and not be damaged? That fire wouldn't, like, lick around the stones and just burn them up? Complete garbage. What are we doing? This is an entire battle scene with the dwarves and smog. We're going on 10 minutes. Ten, we're going on 11 minutes now of just, just stuff that shouldn't exist. Take an amazing, beautiful piece of literature and turn it into complete garbage with your movie. Somehow Bilbo is at the top of a thing. He's got to pull a lever, which has nothing. And the dwarves are making gunpowder now. Is that what's going on?
Why wouldn't Smaug just fill up the whole cavern with fire? Every time he sees them, he just slowly turns and looks, takes his time. So there's a dam there that's been holding water back for however many hundreds of years then since they lost Erebor, and they it's still just waiting for them to pull the lever. There's no mud built up against it. There's no, there's no like, oh gosh. They still have, they still have mining things full of rocks from ore back in the day. This is tragic. This is tragic. What a corruption. Uh, desolation indeed. This is complete desolation of Tolkien's work. Complete. Complete and utter desolation of Tolkien's work. <sighs> I'm glad, well, it was probably worth 300 bucks. I, I gotta admit. <laughs> Probably worth it. We'll do what we'll, once I finish the third movie, which I can't even imagine how much garbage is in that. Once I finish that, we'll we'll find a new project. It'll probably be Minecraft to be my guess. We're gonna be building up to the Star Wars holiday special at Christmas time. Wait for the dwarves fantastic there's another fantastic the water is the what is the water the fantastic idea or is there another? He's unleashing molten metal? And there's heroic music playing? There are more cartoony stuff. Somehow the dwarves fall out of the barrels and survive. This is Attack of the Clones. This is like ripped right off from Attack of the Clones. Which, by the way, you really don't want to rip off stuff from Attack of the Clones very much. <laughs> what? How is now Thorns running around with a wheelbarrow underneath Smog? This is just a giant cartoon, dude. and now he's gonna ride the wheelbarrow in the, in the molten. What is happening? What is this plan he has? Is this like Luke going to Jabba's palace type of plan? Bad CGI with that, that tower collapsing there. Again, why doesn't Smaug just fry the entire place? He would survive. And Bilbo's running running away slowly. Sliding down this giant... Thorin's on a roller coaster, jumps off, grabs a chain... What's 2,000 F, 2,000 Swedish? I cannot deal with how stupid this is. I can't deal. Is this giant tapestry going to fall on Bilbo? Yep. He'd be dead. That thing weighs thousands of pounds. We're on fifth, the last 15 minutes is just extra garbage. So unnecessary. <sighs> okay, Smaug leaves the cavern. And Bilbo tries to talk him out of it? Bilbo tries to talk him out of going to Lake Town. This didn't happen. Oh my god, here's Thorin. Thorin yells at Smaug, and Smaug is going to turn around here. How's... What did Thorin do? Why did he ride the wheelbarrow down the molten... What is happening? Did you find what you needed? Yeah. Good. This is horrific. That's why I don't want it. 
Well, they paid me to watch it, so I'm watching it. Oh. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, you don't need to see this. Just re- just listen to Andy Circus read the book. I already read it three times. Andy Circus audiobook is amazing though. This is so stupid. Oh, 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah, surely the wheelbarrow would be fine. He wouldn't like burn up in it. What are they doing? This is really stupid. So the big plan is to show him a giant gold statue of Thorin's dad. Is that what's going on? And that's going to... Now we've thwarted Smaug? Because he's so in love with the gold? And then he melts it. So now we have molten melting gold. So it's going to be a river of molten gold... I'm trying to picture the pitch meeting that Peter Jackson held to come up with this. Look. All right. Is Ed Sheeran in this? Okay. The best way to fight a dragon is build a big golden dwarf. So... Now he's coated in gold as he flies off to go fight Lake Town? Oh, no. He flies into the air and twists off all the gold. Then he's falling, and now he goes to Lake Town. Okay, that was a full 19 garbage minutes. That's an hour and a half of this movie that's complete garbage. Oh, this is still garbage because Toriel's still there. I am Iron Man. There's a song. What's the song? He's going to trash Lake Town, but not the way he thinks he's going to trash it. Is that the end of the movie? That's the end of the movie. <sighs> you, you guys... Now we get some pop singer singing a song about Durin's sons. So Ed Sheeran's singing this. Okay, fine. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm done. I'm done. Timer off. Well, let's take one minute to absorb what just happened, and then I'm getting out of here because I can't deal. I can't deal with this. Giant golden dwarf defense. Best idea since the wheel. By the way, did they they didn't have to even time to organize and talk about that. I mean, that, the, that was so complex. All right. So there was 90 extra minutes. So, so far, there was 80 extra minutes in the first movie and 90 extra minutes in this movie. That's 170 extra minutes. You do the math. That's three hours and 10 minutes. Nope, it's two hours and 50 minutes of extra stuff. So, and the movies so far are like 
five hours long. So, so far, we've gotten one movie's worth of content. And honestly, the third movie... I guess the third movie's going to have Smog dying, Lake Town being destroyed, Battle of the Five Armies. It's called Battle of the Five Armies. They're going to throw in orcs as an extra army, so it'll be Battles of the Six Armies. But I guess the goblins are out of the picture. Like, the goblins aren't going to show up anymore. There's no more goblins. Goblins are gone. So goblins are replaced by orcs. And we're going to turn one chapter... We're going to turn two chapters of the book into another two and a half hour movie is what's going to happen. <sighs> yeah, total improv. Like, we know this, this, we know that this giant statue is sitting here in these rocks. Let's go melt it. All right, guys. Well, we'll wait a couple weeks. I'll come back and watch the third movie and suffer and suffer and suffer through the third movie. And unfortunately, I've now seen this movie all the way through. And it is it is depressing and it's upsetting. And it is maybe the worst piece of cinema I've ever seen created and it should never have been created. And I'm going to go help Mrs. Nooch with whatever she needs my help with for the rest of the day. Thanks for hanging in there with me, guys. Thanks for partying with me watching the stupid desolation of smog by the way by the way the desolation of smog refers to all of the land leading up to smog that he had fried with fire a hundred years before or whatever and it would never be rebuilt we didn't even get that impression we never even saw that land maybe we did and it wasn't really but they didn't even focus on it. that's what the desolation of smog is the desolation of smog is the desolation of all of the land surrounding the uh, Misty Mountain that that he had desolated so many years before. And we didn't get any... Re so this the entire title of the movie has nothing to do with anything in the movie. Uh, the next thing I'm raising, after I finish the third movie, the next thing I'm raising money for is Minecraft. You guys can watch me play Minecraft. I don't like Minecraft, but it, it, it's not this bad. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great day. Nooch too good. Oh, my God.